Do this in the fall and the earth will become like bread. If your soil feels like stone and your harvest keeps shrinking, you're not dealing with bad luck. You're dealing with dead soil. And every time you dig, till, or flip that soil over, you kill what little life remains. But this fall, you can change that completely. In just a few simple steps, your garden soil can become soft, crumbly, and rich, like a loaf of fresh bread. This isn't magic, and it's not a product pitch. It's science, and it's what every successful grower at Soil & Crop Central swears by. Step 1. Stop digging, start structuring. The first rule of living soil is, don't dig. Digging destroys the complex network of microorganisms, fungi, and insects that give soil its structure and fertility. Instead of digging, organize your space into permanent garden beds and fixed walking paths. This prevents compaction from foot traffic and lets beneficial organisms thrive year after year in undisturbed zones. Permanent beds don't have to be raised or bordered. Simply mark where you'll grow and where you'll walk, and never step on the growing areas. Over time, the soil there will naturally stay loose, absorb water better, and require no annual tilling. You'll save hours of labor and eliminate the need to constantly replan the layout. Step 2. Feed the soil. Like it's alive. Fertile soil is not just dirt. It's a living ecosystem that must be fed. The fall is the best time to give your soil what it needs most, organic matter. Think compost, vermicompost, fermented manure, bone meal, peat, or even kitchen waste. Each of these adds a different mix of nutrients and microbes. If you garden on sandy soil, add a few buckets of clay per bed to help it retain water and nutrients. If you have clay soil, mix in coarse sand or peat to make it more airy and friable. The goal isn't to change the soil type, but to balance its structure and feed it a buffet of organic compounds that microbes can digest all winter long. They'll transform your waste into humus, that soft, bread-like texture every gardener dreams about. Step 3. The Green Revolution. Grow your fertilizer. You know, nature never leaves soil bare, and neither should you. As soon as you harvest in the fall, go ahead and plant green manures. These are also called cedarates. Some good options are oats, rye, buckwheat, mustard, or even lupine. Their roots work to break up compacted soil, enrich it with nitrogen, and, well, they feed all those beneficial organisms down below. When the greens grow tall but before they flower, just cut them down and lightly mix them into the top 7 to 10 centimeters of soil. You're not digging here. You're blending them into the surface, sort of like tossing a salad. This layer of chopped greens will decompose over winter, feeding soil microbes and increasing both moisture retention and airflow. By spring, you'll find your soil soft, rich, and ready for planting. And you won't even need a single shovel. Step 4. Bring in the microbial workforce. Microbes are really the true farmers of your soil. Without them, no amount of compost or fertilizer can fully feed your plants. To jumpstart microbial life, add biological activators that contain beneficial organisms such as Trichoderma fungi and Bacillus subtilis, that's also called the hay bacillus. These natural soil cleaners and builders help protect roots, increase nutrient absorption, and fight off those disease-causing fungi. Here's the formula we use at Soil & Crops Central. Mix two tablespoons of the microbial concentrate into five liters of non-chlorinated water and pour this evenly over 100 square feet, which is about one standard garden bed. You can also spray the solution on the soil surface after cutting down green manures or applying compost. Do this once in the fall and again in early spring for maximum effect. Within weeks, you'll notice your soil becoming darker looser, and just plain easier to work with. Step 5. Partner with fungi, the mycorrhiza secret. Every plant has a hidden ally beneath the surface, fungi. These microscopic partners form what's called mycorrhiza, a natural network that connects plant roots with fungal threads called hyphae. 
Through this network, plants receive more water, phosphorus, and trace minerals than roots alone could ever reach. Most soils already contain mycorrhizal fungi, but tilling, chemicals, and dryness can really wipe them out. To restore them, apply a mycorrhizal inoculant directly to your fall beds or planting holes. Just a spoonful around each root zone is enough. Once introduced, these fungi multiply and create permanent root partnerships. You'll see stronger seedlings, larger fruits, and better drought tolerance. And all that without any extra feeding. Step 6 is all about boosting carbon and creating soil buffering. When you add organic material and increase biological activity, carbon dioxide levels actually rise in the soil layer. This is really vital because carbon is the main building block of all organic matter. Plants take carbon from the air and soil, turning it into leaves, stems, and fruits. As you keep feeding the soil, you're building its carbon bank. And this leads to something pretty remarkable. Soil buffering. A buffered soil maintains balance. It holds water without becoming swampy, resists pests and pathogens naturally, and stays fertile longer. You'll notice that plants in such soil rarely show nutrient deficiencies, even when unfertilized, because the microbial community constantly releases minerals in plant-available forms. Step 8. Let nature finish the job. Once you've built your permanent beds, go ahead and feed them with organic matter, seeded green manures, and inoculated microbes. Then, well, just stop there. Don't cover the beds with plastic or dig them again. Let snow, rain, and frost do their quiet work. The freeze-thaw cycles will gently crumble those soil clods, and the microbial army you introduced will be busy breaking down organic residues right beneath the surface. Come spring, when you push your hand into the soil, it should feel a lot like breaking apart a loaf of fresh bread. Soft, aerated, and full of that sweet, earthy smell that only living soil has. Maintain the system. Once your soil is alive, keeping it healthy is actually pretty simple. Keep using the same walking path so you avoid compaction. Add compost or mulch every season to feed those microbes. After every harvest, replant with green manures instead of leaving the ground bare. And, whenever possible, skip the synthetic fertilizers that disrupt the biological balance. Within one or two years, you'll notice you don't need to dig or feed nearly as much as before. The soil becomes self-sustaining. From dirt to life. The payoff. Healthy soil is so much more than just a growing medium. It's a living organism that protects, nourishes, and sustains your crops. It absorbs rain instead of letting it run off. It resists weeds naturally. It holds nutrients longer, supports pollinators, and even regulates temperature for your roots. The results are undeniable. Juicier tomatoes, stronger peppers, sweeter berries, and greens that keep producing longer into the season. And honestly, all of this begins with what you do this fall. So here's your fall plan from Soil and Crop Central. Stop digging, build permanent beds, load them with organic seed, green manures, inoculate microbes, and let the earth do the rest. Just follow this system once, and you'll never look at gardening the same way again. If this video helped you understand how to turn your soil into living, fertile ground, hit the subscribe button and share it with every gardener who still believes they need to dig. Let's bring life back to the soil, soft, rich, and alive like bread.